This is question 17 for the ACT math exam I'm working through, and this one has to do with testing your ability again in geometry and then uh, really working with arithmetic again. So here we go. What is the length in inches of a side of a square whose area is equal to that of a 12 inch by 27 inch rectangle? All right, so we're talking about, you know, a, a rectangle here. It's got, you know, the sides of 12 and 27, right? And then there's some square that also happens to have the same area, right? We'll call that x for now. Okay, so, and they're saying, all right, well, well, if these are the two sides of the rectangle and it has a certain area and a square has that same area, then what is the length of a side of the square? All right, well, first let's figure out what the area of the rectangle is uh, to figure out what area we're talking about here. So just take 12 times 27, right? And that's 324. All right, well, if uh, I plug in 324 here, and 324. All right, so that means our square and the rectangle, but the square has an area of 324. All right, well, if I think of these sides as n, right, I know that the area of a square is just, you know, this is n2, but base times height, right? So n times n is n squared, and that equals 324, right? So how can I get n by itself and figure out what the side actually equals? Well, I can take the square root of both sides, right? So the square root of n squared is just n, so I get my variable by itself, which is what I want, and then I need to take the square root of 324, and maybe I'll get lucky enough and this problem will give me a, a perfect square. Let's see. So I've just got 324 plugged in, I'll take the square root of it, and there we go, it happens to be 18, right? So the answer is C. Now this brings up Something else, I guess, I just realized, uh, this is the third answer in a row that happens to be C, and I'm, you know, I'm making up these problems as I go along here, so this just brings up, don't choose your answers in the ACT based on the letter. Do it based on the number. Do it based on the actual answer, not on the letter. A lot of students ask me when I work with them, you know, is a certain letter you know, more likely to be right than another? No, and you should definitely not be keeping track of which letters you're selecting because they're totally irrelevant. Each answer on the ACT is right, you know, in equal amount of time. So the math section happens to have five answers. That means each of these is right 20% of the time, and they are selected by the computer randomly. So there's no order, there's no human trickery, and hey, let's make all the answers B and mess with the students. No, they're, they're all right 20% of the time, and so you should never be afraid of circling C three times in a row, uh, but you shouldn't circle C three times in a row either because you think that that's a good pattern. You should, you should always choose your answers based on the math you're doing, not on the actual letter choice. All right, see you next time.